Some of you guys have asked how I do my MIDI over the Ethernet. And I use a simple program called RTP MIDI. It's a free software. But when I'm on the road, or if I'm playing a gig or something like that, uh, I tend to use just one laptop using uh, Smiths & Martins emulator software and Torque. Uh, I use Torque because I can easily just right click and assign all my MIDI uh, on the fly if I need to, even if I have like an, an external piece of hardware or I have this, uh, which is all done by a hand. Uh, it's all modular, like this fader doesn't have to be here. You can just set up everything you want. Uh, and then there's multiple pages where you can have different things. And basically, uh, this fader down here will control this fader up here and so on. This whole board has been programmed. And the benefit here is I get multi-touch that isn't glitchy. But what you all are interested in is the Ethernet possibility. So basically I want to turn this guy into like a Jazz Mutant Lemur or a Jazz Mutant Dexter. And so what I need is either an Ethernet cable uh, a, or a wireless router uh, or a patch cable. And I'll share a link down below to, to show you how uh, to make a patch cable because that's what I used in the other video. It's basically just a cable going from one computer to the other. And if you guys have any questions about this, the reason why this screen isn't on is because the backlight blew out. So now I have to use a monitor. And this is was my first rig for Ableton, but it's not as powerful as it used to be. Uh, so basically, I'm going to get out of Torque. And what you're going to see when you start RTP MIDI, which I'll provide a link below, uh, once you install it, it uses Bonjour, which you're going to have to install as well. Don't worry, uh, it'll actually provide a link for you to install it. And then uh, you just open it up, set it up, and then you should be ready to go. So on the screen, you should see this. Once you start up RTP MIDI, you have up at the top, Right here, my sessions. Uh, when you add, you add your session, your directory, who else is on that has RTP MIDI on the same network, uh, who do you want it to connect to. You can actually put restrictions on who. And then enabled your port, local name, bonjour name, participants, and live routings. Uh, basically, it's pretty simple to do. First, you want to distinguish which computer you're going to use as the master and which one's going to be the participants. Uh, like I said before, you can have multiple participants and basically what this will do is just broadcast the MIDI, uh, possibly also receive. I haven't tried it out yet. So, so for right now, uh, when you start it up, you want to click the little plus sign. And what that'll do is make your name of your computer pop up there and now you can start messing with all these settings right here but as you can see it already assigns a port name uh, so it makes the pipeline through the network without you having to mess with firewalls and your names and then down here what you want to do is click on the MIDI software that you're using so for Smiths and Martin it's local B internal MIDI uh, if you were using an external piece of hardware it would be named something differently. And just in case I miss something, I also do the rounding back into this computer uh, with loop B MIDI. You don't have to do that, but I just do that just in case. And then once you're all done, you hit enabled. Whoops, that was a little too fast. Yeah, it takes a, just a second or two to enable it. And then you know when it's enabled when you actually have an address um, that's assigned. And so from here, you're done with this. Uh, yeah, I, s I switched to my Ableton mode. Um, has different windows. It's not done yet. So now you go on to your participant. And I've already installed. And I haven't set it up yet. So when you set up your participant, 
you want to do the same thing. You want to add your computer to the session. And now I ran into a little bit of trouble. Sorry for uh, all the chopped uh, videos, but it wasn't actually showing this. When you start this and you've set it all up, when you go on to your other computer, you should have your other computer's name in the directory. So what I did was I just restarted my computers, both of them, and uh, then I started my master computer up first and then this one. It's a little complicated, but once it's all set, as soon as you plug in your computer or you're on the network, uh, it automatically starts doing it. So to set up your participant, you do the same, basically the same thing as you did with the master, but a little one thing different. So you click on the plus sign for my sessions. Then what happens is the little connect button is enabled. If you have several computers using RTP MIDI, uh, just click the master computer that you want to talk to. And you click it, and then you click connect. And once that's done, um, your computer's name should be, the other computer's name should be in the participants section. And you don't have to do anything with the live routing. Uh, not that I haven't tested yet. And then you just click enabled. And it should be all good. Uh, while my Ableton boots up, I'm just going to show you guys on the wireless network. This is an N wireless, but I do have a G card. Uh, I'm getting one millisecond latency, two now. Um, I haven't seen anything higher than five milliseconds, but of course, when you connect it on a giga router, gigabit router, or even a hundred bit uh, megabit router, uh, you should see a zero millisecond latency because all you're sending is MIDI. And of course, that'll get bigger if you're on the Wi Fi uh, as distance gets larger and your signal goes down. At this point, I just have a little uh, file that I wrought up. <laughs> since it can run it on this computer. So basically at this point, whatever software you have, you want to set it up so that the program is talking to the MIDI controller, which in this case is your computer's name. So in Ableton, you want to go to Options, down to Preferences, and then you want to go to the MIDI tab. At this point, if you have done this before, uh, you should see Microsoft GS Wavelength or wavetable uh, synth if you're using a PC and then the rest of it should be like it is. If you're doing RTP MIDI you should see your computer's name, the computer that you're working on. And At this point you just want to click on remote on for input. So the MIDI signal coming into the computer is being is controlling Ableton. And once you're done go to the MIDI tab which puts it into MIDI learning mode which you can tell when everything starts turning blue. You click on the thing that you want to assign, then you go over to your controller and you move a fader to its minimum and maximum position. Now what you should see on the left is you assign something. And I'm going to assign another one by clicking this other fader and I'm going to move the second one. And it should be assigned, as you can see. And then just to show you guys that it actually works, I'm going to get out of MIDI mode by clicking the MIDI button again. And we're just going to play the track. So it's running. And everything's set at full. So we turn it on, and I turn on a track. And as you can see, it's starting to play. And then as soon as I move my fader down, it moves the other fader. And I'm going to click the other track just to show you that both of them are working. And I can drag both of these down. And they're going down. I'm 
Just a little tip, anything that turns blue on Ableton, you can assign as a MIDI. 